Does VDJ work with everything? Well, not everything, but it's actually more than enough. Does it work well with others? Yes, um, for the most part, in my experience, it does a great job in utilizing and, and taking over hardware that it wasn't natively built for. I was able to use every piece of hardware that I've owned and I didn't really have any issues. Now, of course, there is some quirkiness to the software that on occasion, and I can't put my finger on when it happens or why it happens, but on occasion, I will just get some, some ghosting where something was working the way it's supposed to and then now it's just not working the way it was intended to, the way I was just using it, you know, 20 seconds ago. Maybe a pitch fader um, is no longer reading the pitch and I'm going, making extreme gestures to try to get the thing to reactivate and nothing's happening and then finally, it does. That's, that's a ghosting effect, it's just weird. It doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. But software-wise, if you're looking for a application that pretty much works with every everything and you don't have to concern yourself with whether or not it's going to be outdated in a month or so or you're going to update your computer and realize that your hardware no longer works with the new version of that software well i think Vir virtual dj kind of eliminates that you know it gives you it breathes new life like i said with the 57 it, it actually makes the 57 usable again so I think that certain companies with their forced obsolescence of their product to get you to buy new software, well, this actually removes that necessity. You're on Virtual DJ, you're not concerned with whether or not it's gonna work. It's probably going to work. As long as there's an audio card in that mixer, it's gonna work. And that's, there's a lot to be said from that, honestly. That's, that's a really, really great feature. Speaking of hardware, VDJ opens up hardware features that weren't even native to the program. Let's say you're using the F DS9 and you've come from like the RAIN 62. Well, the RAIN 62 has split queue. And if you've come to love that feature, it was very frustrating when you went to the S9 and realized that feature was gone. Well, with VDJ, you can actually create your own split queue software dependent where it would allow you to hear both sides in your headphones. That's so cool. I mean, that's really, really cool. And I think that when you see things like this, when you see a software company adding these things in, when the native company said, oh, it couldn't be done and it's done, well, that tells you how companies work and it tells you how they try to make money. Now there's a huge debate on what software is the best and what software makes the most sense for you as a DJ. And obviously people that are locked to one software are going to say their software is best. And other people that are locked to another software are going to say the same thing. That's where you get this issue. I mean, people want to compare Mac versus PC or Android versus iPhone, and it's pretty appropriate. I mean, you have people that are loyalist to that software and they will do and say whatever is necessary to try to get their point across. You lied about I would never lie about my you grandmother. She in the grave. She liar. gave me that ring. You triggered. Because I've been testing all the software, I have a different outlook on it now. And I've actually been thinking about the problem with virtual DJ and why it gets the rap that it does. And I think I understand why now. The problem with VDJ is VDJ's attitude and their mindset is we're going to give we're going to give you everything and then you choose to take away what you don't want. So we're giving you everything and if we're giving you everything, that's the best. That's what you want. You want everything. So here it is. Here's everything. But the problem is most people don't want everything all at once, okay? They want to feel comfortable with something, and they want to get to know it and then they want to add to their software. Give me what I want first, and then I can add everything in at my leisure, okay? So give me what I know it needs to happen. Don't give me all the automation. Let me first use the software. Let me see if it's what I need, and then I can say, you know what? It'd be great if, if I could do this. And then I go into the software, and I find out, hey, there it is right there. Now I do it. Now, not only am I comfortable with what I know, but I'm becoming comfortable with what I'm learning too. And it all makes sense. If you give them everything, people don't know what they're doing versus what the software is doing. So 
it, I think it creates a little bit of a disconnect with the software. Part of the fun, part of the fun and in, in, in DJing or using software is that you learn to love all the features. You learn to, to work with the software in front of you. And then when new features are added in, they, they become a plus. You know, when Serato first came out and it was just Scratch, that's all you needed. It, it, it treated itself like a, like a straight up turntable mix deck. Okay, not a lot of bells and whistles, just enough. So then when they added things in like effects and the isotope effects and, you know, they started adding things to Serato Video and, and then Serato Flip, all of these things weren't taking away from what the DJ software did. Now they were adding it in, but you were so comfortable with the software that once you started adding those things in, you realized the positives of what it could do. The, the things I complained about in my first video, my first impressions video, a lot of people came back and said, well, you just don't know the settings. You learn the settings, then all of these issues go away. Well, the settings are where the problem starts and ends. Virtual DJ feels like a program that was created by a programmer that happened to DJ versus the other way around. Within the program, all the bells and whistles are there. Everything is there, but it doesn't talk to the DJ in the same DJ language that we're accustomed to. And I think that's where the problem is. Virtual DJ has been around longer than every other DJ software out there, yet it has one of the worst GUIs on the planet. By the way, GUI, graphic user interface, just in case you didn't know. It's, it's not visibly inviting, nor is it technically inviting. It's a place that you go to because you have to, but it doesn't lead you where you want to go. Some DJs are gonna say, well, that's where the power is. But I would say that's what makes it the most frustrating. Let me give you an example, the break effect. So real quick, I wanna take you through the difference between setting up your start and stop with Virtual DJ versus with Serato. But in Virtual DJ, you have to go into the settings of course, then go into your options. And in options, you have your most used settings, but a lot of the things that are most used may or may not be what you're looking for here. So in a normal situation, I'm thinking a break, I wanna type in break. And let's just see what happens if I type in break. Break, nothing, I get nothing under break. Let's scroll through. So when we scroll through, we're now looking at all settings we're scrolling through and there are just many, many, many different options for, for the system. Stop, audio, ramp, stop time. So we're gonna assume that this is the break, okay? Even though it probably should just say break or ramp, stop time, break. So you know what you're doing. So obviously the break's not working. So let's adjust it. Click back on here. Okay, that's not enough. So let's up it up to say half. Okay, that's not bad. It's a little long. So let's bring it down to say four. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so now let's take a look at Serato. Load up Serato. Go into settings and under breaking on the first page, we have start time, stop time. So let's play the song. And if this were nothing, it would be here. It would just stop easily. Now all we have to do is adjust. It's pretty good. Done. I know people are gonna say, that's not a big deal that doesn't really make or break a DJ software. And it doesn't, you're right. But it is a bigger deal than you think because I go to software because first off, I like the way it looks, I like what it does, but I also know that I can go into the back end and I can get the things rather quickly. Virtual DJ doesn't make things quick. It doesn't make things easy for you. And that's because they're trying to give you everything, okay? There is no GUI at all, it's just data and text. If you don't care, fine. But I think Serato understood that when they made their application because everything is designed to be easy for you. You know, if you want to affect the break, you just turn the radio. If you want to, you know, 
make something active, you just you know hit the toggle and it's all right there. All the most important tools, the most important things you're gonna use as a DJ are all right there up front. And I think that, that goes a long way. Speaking of Mac and PC, it's evident that Virtual DJ was definitely made for the PC. I don't mind having to use different hotkeys, but if you port an application over to Mac, well, you should utilize the tools that Macs have. We use command on most of our things, and command and option are on both sides of a keyboard on a Mac, okay? The command button and the option button. What's not on both sides? The control button, and everything in Virtual DJ is control option oriented, which means I have to only use one side. Now, of course, I can remap the keys. I'm not opposed to that, but certain things don't work. In order to search for music, you hit control F and that's gonna give you access to your search functions. Well, for some reason, command F doesn't work for uh, searching. I can't program it. I've set it up in there. It's set up as Command F, but the action will not work in the program. That's a little annoying. I can get around it, but it's still annoying. One of the biggest frustrations that I had when I first started using this software was um, it went crazy on me a couple times during a during an actual DJ set, and I couldn't figure out why. And then I realized what was going on. There is a reverse auto loop feature using option F. Option F, which is right next to control. Now, I didn't know that when I did it. And there's a feature for it, I know it is. I'll put it up there if I can remember. But the point is, that's a thing. I had to disable it because it was causing me problems. If I'm not looking at my keyboard and I quickly hit something, I don't want the thing to freak out. I don't even know why this option F feature is even there. It's way too close to the control and potentially it can really put a serious damper on your DJ set. I know what it is now. I don't hit the button anymore. Like I said, I disabled it. But if you can in the future, let command be the default for Macs. If you're gonna sell to Macs, then give us our comfort zone with it. Don't make us move over to the PC side if we're using Macs. The headphones. For some reason, when I use the headphones and I'm monitoring my music, it just doesn't sound as good coming into my headphones as when I use another software. I don't know why, but for some reason there is a strangeness to the sound that makes it harder to, to hear. It just sounds a little more cluttered. Probably has a lot to do with the fact that there's a lot more control within Virtual DJ, I mean, you can do a split queue when no other company does split queue. So I think that maybe that has something to do with it, just the way the headphones sound, because it's digitizing the sound um, in order to make these things, make these functions happen. I don't know for sure, but I just know the sound is a little bit off. Yes, can I DJ with it? Of course, but it just, it doesn't sound as good to me. If you're like me, and you are coming from a different program, there's a lot of settings that you're gonna to have to change. And I did go through all that. I went in there and I changed a whole bunch of things. And even though the back end is horrible to use, um, I did manage to get through it and fix it. So if you're not gonna change the GUI, well, here's a suggestion to at least make it work a little better for you. After I went through all the reprogramming, the, re the readjusting all my settings, uh, I was having problems with my computer. So I had to reformat my hard drive. And once I reformatted it and reinstalled Virtual DJ, I was so, so sad knowing that I was gonna have to go back in there and fix everything that is now reset. And I can't tell you how much I almost didn't go back. I'm gonna be honest with you. So I think a solution would be, well, for instance, for people like me that are paying monthly, why don't you institute a save feature? Once I've done everything I want, I hit save, it goes up to the cloud and it stores my setup in the cloud. So now no matter where I go, it's going to work for me. If I have to reformat my hard drive, it doesn't matter. I log in, it brings all my settings down like nothing has changed. Also, I think this would help you because I think that once people start utilizing that and all of these settings are then going up to the cloud, well, you can actually look at what the majority of people actually use. And then 
you can create a layout of most commonly used features for anybody new coming on board. So I know you have your, your beginner layout, but maybe the next layout is the most commonly used layout. And that layout has everything set up the way most people use it. And I can pretty much guarantee if you go through all the settings, there's probably some things in there that just people naturally modify, no matter what. And I think that would go a long way to making people feel a little more comfortable when they're using a program. Instead of going from, I mean, I'm a beginner, I know nothing, to I am a pro, I know everything, because there's a lot in the middle. So, in conclusion, <laughs> so what do I feel about the software? Well, I would say this. If you don't have or are loyal to a particular brand, okay, if you haven't used Serato DJ, haven't used Recordbox or Tractor, it didn't come with your default hardware, and now you're used to it, I would say Virtual DJ is the best universal DJ software out there. Is it the best software? Well, it depends on what you're using it for. Um, I can see strengths and weaknesses in every platform. I've been using it a lot. However, since I bought the DDJ 1000, I have been using Recordbox. I'm really testing out the software. I really wanna know what software is the best. And the best is relative, so it could be the best for some things and the worst for others. I will say this, I will continue to pay for the software, the, the monthly software fee. I will keep it because I do think that there are strengths in it. The video strengths alone are probably some of the best things out there. I can definitely see it as one of the stronger DJ apps. Also, their user forum is fantastic. I mean, even when I had made all of my um, my, my claims before, uh, when I went there and I, and I signed up for the forums and I started talking to people, they were all really, really helpful. Now, of course, they need people to be on their side because of, again, of the bad rap that Virtual DJ gets. But they are genuinely some, some, I think, some really nice people and they're there to actually help you. There's a lot to be said for having a forum that is there to help you learn and to get better at the application that you use. I can't say the same thing for all the other ones. I think Serato's forum is actually decent, um, but there's a lot more jade to, to them. Anyway, guys. Um, that's my review of Virtual DJ. It's a great application, it's a great product, and I think uh, I think if you decided to go with that, you would be just fine. Will I move over completely? No, I'm not gonna move over to any software completely, but I'm glad to know that there's a lot of software out there that works really, really well. So my next review coming out is for Recordbox or Serato, I haven't decided yet, but it will be for one of them coming out soon. Guys, um, Leave a comment below if you found what I said here useful. If you have any questions about the software or if you have anything you wanna, you wanna add down below, please leave that down below. You guys, it's always a pleasure putting out these videos for you. I hit 5,000, sky's the limit. I'm really appreciative to all of you people that are, that are here watching my videos. So once again, always a pleasure. And if I don't talk to you later, we'll talk soon. Peace.